school, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Report. I'm your host, Robert. All right, as we have done in the past, what I call Showcase of the Independence. I've showcased a few different independent companies by doing the best of. I did back in January, and I actually did a couple reviews of all the shows at WrestleMania for the last few years, and I've also did Rev Pro, their 11th anniversary show. So we're going to, I'm going to continue that showcase of the independence we're going to review a wrestling revolver show from last night called revolver unreal at los angeles california um Hominton glendale era there's a reason i'm picking this particular show to do and we'll get to the main event and we'll know why um but as a pro wrestling fan i, I follow 35 plus companies including all the main stuff uh, last year I did, a, I want to say 15, I did a showcase of the independence of the best matches of 2022. This year I'm going to try to do some more in January, maybe, ho hopefully 35, but that's the goal. But 31 independent companies plus the big four. And so sporadically I, I want to do one of these where I watch a show within a couple days, put a review of it up, and kind of get that independent wrestling out there that a lot of people don't know about. And get, you know, more people watching it because, you know what, AEW's great, WWE's great, Impact's great, New Japan's great. There's also a lot of great stuff out there on the, on the independents. I know a lot of people don't watch Impact Wrestling, but their main event on Impact last night was Will Ospreay versus Josh Alexander. I gave it five star. If you haven't seen this, it's on YouTube. Go find it and watch it. It's match of the year. Anyway... The Wrestling Revolver is actually owned by Sammy Callahan. They're out of Ohio. So them having a show in L.A. is first time ever. So Revolver Unreal. So we're going to run down this card. We have Moxley on this card. We have a Fought 2 on this card. We have a MMA star, former main, ev main event wrestler at WrestleMania. Um, so yeah, we got lots of great talent here. So first match, we had a Lucha Libre match, Gringo Loco and Ray Horace. Ten minutes of just ah, <laughs> that's the best way to describe a Lucha Libre match. If you've never if you've never seen one, which most people have, but just two guys that literally their only job is put a show on, and they did that. Three and three quarter star Gringo Loco getting the victory over Ray Horace. These guys are two of my favorite favorite Lucha Libre wrestlers. Next up, we have an intergender match. We have a lot of those on the independent scene. We had Jacob Fatu, yes, the cousin to the Usos, versus Masha Slamovich. Masha Slamovich is one of the best wrestlers in the world. She is uber good at striking, um, but going against somebody to the level of Jacob Fatu, he is the Usos plus Umaga. He does backflips. He does the moves the Usos do. He's talked about it before the interviews where he would play in the pool at Uncle Eddie's house at Umaga. And, uh, or, yeah, Umaga. And would do backflips in the pool. Well, Jay and Jimmy didn't do that, but he did that. And that's how he does backflip up top rope. Uh, but these two went out there and put on one hell of a show. Jacob Fatu getting the best of Marshall Samovich. I ended up giving it three and a half. Next up, two guys I've never heard of, but they put on a pretty good match. Paul Walter Hauser and Matthew Palmer. Um, I've seen Matthew Palmer maybe maybe once. I've never heard of the, this Paul Walter Hauser. Good little match. Ended up giving it two and three quarter star. Um, Paul Walter Hauser ended up getting the victory. Next up, we had a scramble match for the Revolver World Championship. We had champion Jake Chris versus Allen Angels. Versus Bullet Club's Chris Bay. Versus Rocky Romero. Versus Sonico. Plus Damian Chambers. Damian Chambers was actually the... Uh, he held a golden ticket. So their Money in the Bank. Their number one was a golden ticket. Damian, Changer won, Damian Chambers won that earlier in the year. And cashed it in here. To be part of this scramble match. Just five guys going out there, sorry, six guys going out there and just doing their thing. I mean, we had top rope stuff. We had power stuff. We had a little bit of everything here. We had Jay Crisp retaining his title, which kind of shocked me. I thought they were going to put it on either Allen Angels or Damian Chambers. Now, 
Al Angels was representing Prestige Wrestling out of the West Coast. Prestige and Wrestling Revolvers had a little feud going on between the two companies. A lot of some wrestlers go back and forth. He was actually, if he, Al Angel said if he won the title, he's taking it back to Prestige. So I'm actually waiting for more to happen between the two, because I don't think they've done a combo show yet this year. I'm thinking there's one coming, because of all the history they've talked about and stuff. No, I don't think they have. So, yeah, I think there's, there's got to be one coming. I know last year they did a combo show with Future Stars of Wrestling out of Vegas, and they did something in Impact in 2019. But typically, Wrestling Revolver is in Dayton, Ohio. Um, they were in Prairie, Texas on their last show. This was in L.A. They've been in Iowa a few shows. They've one show in Nevada, and mostly either Iowa or Ohio. So, so like I said, it's owned by Sammy Callahan, part of OVE, Ohio versus everyone. Jake Chris was a part of that as well. But Jake Chris, still your Revolver World Champion. Next up, we had a four-way hoss fight. <laughs> when I say hoss fight, I mean big boys who are talented. I'm talking Steve Macklin. I'm talking one called Manders. I'm talking Jake something and Slice Boogie. Slice Boogie is an East Coast guy. So him wrestling in L.A. against these other guys, totally different ballgame for him. Jake something, he is one powerful, talented guy. Manders, I've called him on, on here. I've done videos with him in it. On GCW, I've called him a young Bradshaw. And then Steve Macklin's just, something's wrong with Steve Macklin. But these four guys just beat the tar out of one another, give it three stars. Steve Macklin got the victory. Next up, we talk about styles make fights. That's one of the big things I've talked about here before, and we hear, hear it in pro wrestling. We have the striking ability of Speedball Mike Bailey versus the power of Brian Keith. Brian Keith. If one called Manners is a version of Bradshaw, Brian Keith is Farouk, with a little Bradshaw mixed in. Um, but Speedball Mike Bailey, all about striking. Striking versus power, who wins out? In this case, striking one out. Mike Bailey got the victory. I ended up giving it three and a half. Then we had one of my favorite matches of the night. We had the Switchblades, John Moxley, and Sammy Callahan taking on the Rascals, Trey Miguel and Zachary Wentz. Um, just two different tag teams with two different versions. You have Callahan and Mox, who would rather just tear your head off and hand it to you, versus the high flyers of the Rascals, Trey Miguel and Zachary Wentz. Um, the two merged together quite well, three and a half star, the switchblade of John Mockley and Sammy Callahan getting the victory. And then we come to the main event. Ring of Honor, women's champion, Athena, teaming up with her minion, Billy Starks, going up against former member of the Four Horse Women of UFC, Marina Shafir, and her tag team partner, the one, the only, Ronda Rousey. This is Ronda Rousey's second ever independent wrestling show. Her first one was two weeks ago, Lucha Vavum Arena 51 in LA. Her and Marina Shafir teamed up to take on Brian Kendrick and Tyler Valkyrie. Other than that, she had all her WWE stuff. So she had, oh goodness. Um, So she's been in 144 wrestling matches, so 142 of those were part of WWE, and then the two non-WWE ones. Um, I think she's talented. If you remember back that very first wrestling match she was in, teaming up with Kurt Angle versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, everybody was like shocked at how talented she was. And then, if you also remember, early on in her WWE days, she teamed with Ember Moon, a.k.a. Athena. And then when she had her title, let's see here. I'm trying to see who she, uh, she wrestled with Alexa Bliss a lot. And the Bellas, she did it Charlotte won the Survivor Series. Mickey, Nia. 
Can't stuff with Naya. And Shayna. She ended with everything with Shayna. But, uh, so yeah. This match, it was, it was good. It was a good match. I mean, all four women can wrestle. Uh, I mean, they had their spots for each of them. Um, I ended up giving it three and a quarter and ended in no contest after almost 14 minutes. Because Athena hit Ronda Rousey with the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship, which led it to be no contest. Now, this match was announced probably a couple months ago. Um, it was something to do with charity, if I remember correctly, or maybe that was the last match. I don't know. But it was in L.A. Apparently, she was backstage tonight at the AW Dynamite and Rampage. Is she the signee that Tony Khan is talking about for tomorrow? I think it is. I think it's Ronda Rousey, my opinion. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't care. But the fact that she was wrestling against Athena and Billy Starks, again, two AEW Ring of Honor talents, teaming with Marina Shafir, a Ring of Honor, AEW talent, on a show put on by an AEW, the friend of an AEW guy, John Moxley's friend, Sammy Callahan, who owns Wrestling Revolver, who is also a free agent, so it could be him too. But I think it's Ronda Rousey, myself personally, but hey. But you know what? That is the Revolver Wrestling Revolver Unreal Review. Uh, I'm going to try to do more of these independent shows as I watch them, review them, throw them up. As always, thanks for watching the Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports content.